Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. A big thank you to Gameloft for the review copy of Asphalt 9 Legends on the Nintendo Switch. If you enjoy the content then consider subscribing, we'll be giving away our next free game in the next few days. Now, like many of you, I've played the Asphalt games on mobile and it's been great to see Gameloft gradually tweak the formula over the years. Having just reviewed Grid on the Nintendo Switch and now we have a free to play game coming to potentially jostle its way into pole position. Does it? Let's find out. Now the version that I'm currently looking at here is the paid release which gives you 20 blueprints to unlock the BMW, the Lotus Evora, Dodge Challenger and DS Automobiles DS Intense car and last but not least the Porsche 911 Carrera. It also gives 200,000 credits and 300 tokens. The game currently has around about 70 plus cars in it from significant names in the industry which have been painstakingly modelled for the game. The core experience is split into three categories career mode, multiplayer and events. Now the career mode is where most players are going to start out and this pits you in a variety of tiered events. Cars are ranked from D all the way up to S, the beginner vehicle being the Mitsubishi Lancer X. If you've bought the version that's currently on offer then you'll have a few other cars to choose from and all cars are acquired through blueprints acquired in the game. The career races take place in the form of small tournaments of sorts which will net you small amounts of the currency needed to upgrade each of the cars. The upgrade are given ratings ranging from 1 to 5 and these will have various effects on the performance. Interestingly each race is also given a recommended level which I'm guessing would mean that at certain times you're going to need to either spend some money upgrading the cars to reach that level or grind your way through to get the necessary coins. The currency can also be spent upgrading the car's visuals. So you can change the colour and even the hood sometimes on certain models. As you would expect, car packs are also purchasable using the in-game currency which in itself can then be purchased for real world money. And the default Mitsubishi was more than enough to get me through the first few career stages. Having said that, because I had the paid version, I had enough coins and credits to unlock a few different cars and it felt much less like a free to play game mainly due to this. The tracks themselves are quite well designed with various routes allowing for shortcuts to be found but the make or break thing here is the racing itself and thankfully I would say that is excellent. It feels a lot like the old burnout games if you remember them from back on PlayStation. Races start with momentum so after a brief countdown you're almost launched off the start line. There's a button to allow you to swipe enemies off the track with a spin and anything from knocking them off the track to landing the perfect jump off of a ramp is going to net you some nitro. Nitro is shown at the top of the screen and when the bar is full, double tapping this will allow you an extra boost. This was something we saw back on Asphalt 6 and 7 and it makes a welcome return here. The cars also handle quite differently. Take the Dodge Charger that I unlocked with the pack. This is a squirrely beast but has some serious grunt off the line. Whereas that default Mitsubishi has some excellent handling but doesn't quite have the same performance. It is an incredibly arcade feeling racer as you would expect and it does it very well. I enjoyed the drifting which can be performed easily with a button press and is used to gradually increase that nitro meter. Another good addition, and one which adds a slight bit of strategy to the gameplay, is the inclusion of a timed nitro, whereby if you can hit just at the right point on the nitro meter by pressing again, you'll get an extra bit of speed. Strangely, a little bit like the reload mechanic in Gears of War. While the initial few stages that you'll race on are quite short and are really meant just as an introduction, some of them are quite long and varied, taking place all across the globe from Cairo, the Himalayas, the Caribbean and even Shanghai, to name just a few. I really enjoyed the racing on offer here, but I did notice a touch of rubber banding. When I didn't reach the required car level, all of a sudden I was just left in the dirt regardless of how well I raced. The takedown mechanics and nitro timing do help to mitigate this to some degree, but it's definitely a factor and perhaps evidence of them wanting you to push towards those higher tiered and higher priced cars and have to again even save up or lay down some cash but I'd still say it offers an impressive amount of game for something that could essentially be completely free. The default control systems are very good and there's also the option for tilt steering as well as touch screen steering in handheld. As a dad it's also nice to see an auto acceleration mode because it's one less thing for them to worry about. And yes there is four player split screen multiplayer here as well. Interestingly 
You don't actually unlock multiplayer until you've completed career mode and got 20 career flags, which I did find a little bit irritating, as me personally, I like to dive straight into multiplayer with the kids. And it's important to note that Gameloft have included a completely offline mode that you can toggle from inside the options to make sure that those uh, little spenders don't get their own way. As you progress through the campaign, you'll notice that each time you load up the game, there are different missions for you to complete. These then net you a reward of the premium currency. There is a guild system of sorts called clubs. Here up to 20 players can band together to achieve collective goals. This then nets them certain unlocks that they otherwise wouldn't be able to get. I guess one of my biggest problems with the game isn't actually the gameplay at all. It's the system the whole thing's built upon. There are several addiction loops in place here. Things like the garage level and as you gradually level up the car by doing the races and earning that premium currency and the default currency you unlock the new levels in the garage this then in turn unlocks the potential for different types of car within those premium packs and the cycle goes on and i've got absolutely no problem with them obviously trying to make money within the game but the whole experience feels tailored towards that every screen almost looks like a slot machine with flashing banners and bars telling you about the latest offer on the day, but it's really good to see that Gameloft have taken that seriously and allowed you to switch off the online components within the options. In terms of the multiplayer component of the game, as it currently stands, I can't really test this out as there's no other players online, but it looks like they've really paid attention to the amount of content that players are going to want. Not only can you set up your own clubs, as mentioned, and create races for anyone who's in your club to take part in, but you can easily jump online in any class vehicle to face down against other players in different leagues. The better you do, the higher you get in the leagues, and the more potential rewards you're going to get. As far as content goes, there's just a great deal on offer here. Unfortunately, I just couldn't get past some of the free-to-play elements that are quite restrictive, such as I'd be racing my favourite car, and then all of a sudden I'd need to refuel it. As you can see, you can race it six times before needing to refuel, or you can wait until the timer's depleted and then it will refuel itself, but you could just pay to skip this using the in-game currency. If you're happy to play the game and just dip in and out every few days, then there'll be more than enough to keep you hooked. But I'd definitely give the free version a go before making the purchase on the extra car pack. There's no denying that there's a lot of game here if you're willing to invest the time. And that's the real crux of it. Have you got the time to put into a game that will literally take tens of hours to unlock certain items without having to pay? I personally would love to see companies like Gameloft releasing their titles on Switch in full versions. I'd quite happily pay 20 or 30 pounds for this game if you stripped away all of the flashy casino-like car pack systems and just gave me the full game. The racing's fun, the drifting's enjoyable, and I really enjoy the time trial sections. I just don't like everything that's layered over the top. And to progress, it just feels like it takes too long, and there are too many limiting time-based factors placed upon the player. Regardless of all the bells and whistles and lights and showy bits, the core aspects, the racing and drifting, are a great deal of fun. The split screen works brilliantly, and that alone makes this well worth downloading, and there is a lot of content here. Gameplay scores 16 out of 20. There's no denying the controls are really good and with a mixture of motion as well as a few accessibility modes for younger players, they've done a good job on Switch. But there is an element of unpredictability about the car when it enters the air. Anytime you hit a jump or flip over, it's quite difficult to guarantee that you're going to land on your wheels. And the squirrely steering of some vehicles just doesn't feel right. Still, it's decent. I would give it 16 out of 20. In terms of visuals, the game looks good. It's quite impressive that this has come over from mobile, but it really goes to show how far Gameloft have come with their engine. Official cars look accurate and while obviously the physics models here are no way near accurate pieces of engines and bits of car will be flying off in all directions as you collide with other vehicles smoke from tires will spread across the screen and the flash as you use that double tap nitro boost really is quite impressive another area that often goes overlooked is the hd rumble which is done really nicely here and is quite granular the audio is okay there's nothing overly impressive about the musical score it's as you'd expect fast action-packed keeping that adrenaline going the area i didn't like of the visuals are all the brightly colored click me icons everywhere literally you finish 
finish a race and you are bombarded with stickers and banners and logos and things to click before you can move on, it's all a bit much. It's great to see a good and functional replay mode though and I was really appreciative of that option. You can watch back your action, switch from a cinematic camera to a normal one and it works as you'd expect. In terms of the frame rate, it's quite difficult to tell. I'd say that this is fluctuating. While it seems to target 60 frames per second at most times, there were definitely the occasional dips when a few things were going off on screen. That being said, the game looks very impressive when it's docked and running, especially when you split the screen. I would give visuals 18 out of 20, and the audio is just so-so. That gets 14 out of 20. How do you judge value on a game that could be free? Well, the default for most people is going to say, oh, well, you've got to give it 20 out of 20. I guess it depends if you regard time as money, because this game will eat time and its currency is time. So while you're waiting for things to cool down, you'll always have the option to pay to speed things up. And as you progress, there's definitely a pressure to do just that. If you're enjoying it, then I guess there's nothing wrong with investing a small amount to do just that. But be aware, there's no permanent way to refuel the cars that you drive. So eventually you will have to either wait or pay. The fact that it's free though makes that entirely optional. For the paid version though, which this review is essentially of, is it worth it? I would say not really. Really? No. It's easy to earn the in-game currency, and the cars you unlock aren't particularly great. I think you'd be better off just spending your time and working your way through this as and when. I give value 16 out of 20. But obviously, if you're just going to go for the free version, then you can crank that up. Overall then, Asphalt 9 Legends looks incredibly impressive running on the Nintendo Switch, and I appreciate that they've included a 4 player split screen. This will be nice for players that don't have a great deal of funds available and want to pick up a free to play game. But that being said, the core experience didn't exactly click with me, as I'm not a big fan of those addiction loops. However, credit where it's due, they have produced a really fun racing title, and there's a lot here to do. Make sure that you join the club that I've set up, it's called Switch Up, obviously switch up M and we'll get some races going. Thanks as always to all of you who support the channel, it scores an overall switch up score of 80%. Make sure to leave a comment down below and to our patrons who support us each and every month. For all things switch all the time, keep it switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!